Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I I haven't been reviewing my books this summer. You know, I kept meaning to do it and then, you know, my books from June turned into my books from June and July turned into my books from June, July and August. And I read a lot of small books this summer. So I have about 30 books, almost 30 books to go through. And I thought it would be really boring for me to go through reviews of 30 books and it'd be a really long video. So instead, I served my myself a glass of wine, <laughs> a little fizz, you know, a little rosé to celebrate the end of the Scottish summer. We got some nice weather in September. It's nice. And I thought, you know, join me as I drink and tier rank all of the books that I've read this summer. So the five categories are 10, 10 recommend. Five stars, you know, I loved it, nothing to say. Then we have chaotic good. This is because some authors will just do what they want and they have chaos in their soul, you know, but this was the good, like I enjoyed their chaos. Then we have not for me, self-explanatory. Then we have booktube made me do it because you know, if you're a booktuber, you will know, you get kind of pulled in to these hypes. Yeah. And then we have chaotic bad because again, some people have chaos in their soul and it either wasn't for me or I just didn't think it was very good. <laughs> so let's start with the first book here we have is Dazzling. Oh, and it's good to mention that these screenshots are so tiny that I will not be saying the author name if I do not remember or cannot read it, but it will all be in the description below. So you'll be able to find every single book, name and author and a uh, translator if there was one. So I read this because, well, I had a Ned Galley arc for it, so it's kind of magical realism based in Africa and I thought it would be sound, it sounded kind of good. Uh, it was extremely chaotic, <laughs> but in the end, I just don't think it was for me because I enjoyed magical realism, but this was difficult to follow at times. And I listened to audiobook and at times I was struggling to understand what was going on. So yeah, I think it was a good book, but just not for me. Then we have History Keeps Me Awake at Night. Oh, this was... Okay, this I'm between not for me and chaotic bad. <laughs> Because I, th I should I should I should take a drink every time I say chaos. So history keeps me awake at night is basically this woman who becomes obsessed with this murder that happened in or this disappearance that happened in Mexico. She's South African, but she lives in London. So there's a lot of aspects to it. Why is she obsessed with it? No one understands. She doesn't either. The whole book is weird and doesn't really go anywhere. It's very like in the vibe of like of, it kind of remind me of Sally Rooney and Nisha Dolan, kind of like nothing happened. It was all like vibes. Um, and I'm not sure that I like the vibes of it. So I'm gonna put it in chaotic bed. Look, we're drinking, we're being wild. All right, next we have The End of Man. Oh, I, I love this one. It has to go in tent and recommend. This is a pandemic book which I bought, I'm pretty sure I bought it in April 2020 as well. It came out in March or April 2020. And so it had been written prior to the pandemic and it's about a pandemic. And then the pandemic basically wipes out most of the male population. And I remember I opened it in 2020 and started reading it and the beginning of it was so real. <laughs> that I was like, nope, nope, not for me for now. But then I read it this year and I really enjoyed it. And there's so many different like perspectives and characters so yeah, a one that I really recommend. Then we have Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. This is kind of her, it's kind of a little bit of a biography. And I feel like her essence is chaotic. So it has to be chaotic good because I quite enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, chaos comes out of, yeah, of her. So yeah, in this category. Next we have The Black Ties of Heaven. And this is the first in a series. And I, it's basically following these twins who live in this world where there are powers and they both kind of decide to um, identify as separate genders because I think they're kind of non-binary at the beginning. And I think it was really interesting, but I just don't think it was for me. Like, I don't think I would continue reading this series. 
There's The Two Towers by J.R. Tolkien. You know, would I put 10, 10 recommend? Hmm. I really loved The Fellowship of the Ring. Loved it, even though there was Tom Bombadil. But The Two Towers was a bit more boring. I'll leave it in 10, 10 recommend. Yeah. Then we have Assembly by Natasha Brown. This is a short novel about this woman who's kind of sort of dealing with societal, uh, I guess, racism and also like through the guy she, like for her job or the guy she's dating and his family. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it actually. Let's go with 10 10 recommend. Yeah. Then we have So Long As You Write. This is a collection of uh, essays, poems, fiction, like a little bit of everything. And I absolutely love all their books. So I absolutely love this one. So yeah, again, big recommend. If you're in the UK, you should order it. It's great. Then we have Weather Rhythm Takes You. I think it's Sarah Jass. So I read this for Jane Austen July. So this is like a, a sort of modern reinterpretation. I want to say it's in Trinidad. I'm not sure anymore. But I what I I like the sort of surroundings of it, like the context, but this is a YA, and I think that that just defeats the idea of persuasion because the whole idea of persuasion, she's one of the oldest heron of Jane Austen. So to make her then 18, I think defeated the purpose. Um, so booktube made me do it. <laughs> then we have persuasion. Obviously, Tenten recommend. There's nothing to say about this. Next, we have African Titanics. Uh, I read this because this was a recommendation. Um, about kind of refugees and this is basically about uh it's like the people who came who come continue to come from africa as refugees by boat to europe and i thought it was it was very touching it was very short so very quick to read and yeah so very good tend to recommend yeah i've read some good books this summer next we have disorientation Mm, I love this one. I've had this arc forever, but I kind of wasn't exactly sure what it was about, but it's basically very similar to Yellow Face. I thought this was better. So if you weren't convinced by Yellow Face, you might want to try this one instead. Um, it's more based in the academic world and research. And although the main person that does Yellow Face is kind of like a poet, um, and it's based like, yeah, around academia in the US and stuff like that. But I thought it was really, really good in the way that it um, sort of faces assumptions of, of, of race and identity and culture. So, yeah, really, really good. Then, then. Great. Oh, my goodness. I've read some good books. Okay, I have to re to drink a little bit. Yeah, it hasn't been chaos, but still. All right, next is Cocoon by Michel Jean. This is a book from Quebec that I read. The author basically, I want to say, I thought this was fiction, but I think this is actually totally based on his grandmother. And so it's kind of a retelling of her life. So she was a white woman from Quebec and she fell in love and married into a First Nations uh, indigenous family. And then she began to live that life. And then you see like all the changes that come with like... Um, the colonizers in a way you know the way that they've gone into the land and the way they either you know scarred it and made it impossible for the indigenous people to live from it and then the change of culture that has led to you know them having reserves and also the talks about resident schools and the murder of indigenous people and yeah so again extremely extremely good then we have the enigma of the return by daniela feria another book from quebec and this is the reason I made the category chaotic good. So here he goes. <laughs> this is uh, the story of a man who uh, left Haiti as a refugee, moved to Quebec. And then this is his story of returning to Haiti after his father has died. And so kind of bringing his... Um, he's not bringing him to get buried, but he's going to tell the story to his the news to his family, his mother and everyone. And he hasn't come back in like over 30 years. 
and yeah it was really chaotic uh but really you know this author is doing whatever he wants something was poetry sometimes it was just a, a huge paragraph like he was doing whatever he wanted but i was sort of here for it and yeah a kind of interesting <laughs> experience next is pearl by sean hughes which is read for the booker and let's just go with book two made me do it because I, this is the only reason I picked it up is because I've been following the prize because of booktube and yeah didn't really enjoy it that much um yeah I don't have a lot to say about it all right now we're in the second row of books <laughs> we have Oscar and the Pink Lady by Eric Emmanuel Schmidt another book I read in French I think this author is French Belgian and it was beautiful absolutely beautiful 10 10 recommend if you can get a copy uh, of the translation exists then I would recommend it it's very touching um, it's a boy that is basically in hospice care and then this pink lady who volunteers or you know spends her time at the hospital tells him you go you should write to God and so the book is basically a series of letters to God and it's him experiencing the last year or a few months of of his life and everything that's going through his mind or getting a girlfriend and his parents because he's so mad at them because they kind of don't acknowledge that he's dying and yeah I ended it uh crying and it was really beautiful and I have emotions now so I have to drink now okay oh another book <laughs> next we have a thousand spawned cells by Khalil Hussaini which obviously immediately goes in tent and recommend and again I had a lot of feelings and I cried about this book and I thought I think it's my favorite book of the year so far it was incredible um it was really really difficult and I had some really rough parts of it so I think that I I was weary of it for good reasons but also why did I wait so long and I look forward to reading the kite runner next but again we'll we'll see we'll see when I get to that then we have how to kill men and get away with it I sort of enjoyed the writing of it and it kind of went by really quickly like you can get through it really it's really easy to read and it's basically this woman who starts murdering guys who are following other women home who are drugging uh, you know drinks that are like you know like creepy men basically it's sort of like a promising young woman uh but in this it's obvious that she's killing the men because obviously in promising young woman it was implied but not really, you know? So yes, I enjoyed it, but I don't think it was for me. And Booktube didn't make me do it, actually. It was from my library. I just saw it and I was like, oh, interesting title. Uh, and I did get some looks when I was reading it uh, in the train. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there was chaos. It wasn't totally for me, but I also enjoyed it. So I think it does belong kind of in the middle there. Then we have Polo Park. This is a series of graphic novels about this guy called Paul. And it's from youth till adulthood. And there's a lot of different subjects. So this park thing is basically, it's mostly based around the summer. Um, and also he becomes part of like a scout camp. And uh, to me, there's a chaotic vibe to it. 100%. But, oh, chaos. Um, and the end like hit me just so hard and yeah the, the the pictures were really nice and the story was interesting so yeah well I'll put it in chaotic but it's fine and we have uh, The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl by Issa Rae that is definitely chaotic just like Anna Kendrick I feel like she has a chaotic vibe but I love it I love this book and I love like the different it was basically a series of essays about different aspects of her life or things that she wants to talk about and yeah I really enjoyed it and I read it because I was about to go see Barbie I know she was the president Barbie so yeah um yeah I enjoyed it it's a bit sort of dated in a way because it is um all like essays are always a little bit dated that way but yeah enjoyed it anyway uh, if I've survived you by Jonathan Escoffrey is book two made me do it again <sighs> this was for the booker so it's been long listed it's sort of a series of short stories um, based around the same family. So it's all following men. 
all of them toxic in one way or another, but all of them victim to a patriarchal society, to their circumstances as black men, as as immigrants, as children of immigrants. So there's a lot to this, but there's some stories I like, but as a whole, I didn't love it. I didn't think it was for me, so I'll just put it in here. Yeah. Then we have Do You Dream of Terror 2. I have always heard about this and I always like a little bit of a of a sci-fi like planet book, you know. Uh but this was not for me. If anything I'll put in chaotic bad actually. Oh chaos. So this is a reason you should not send teenagers to space. It was like basically like one of these soap operas for teenagers but they're heading to space to save the human race and you're just like wow we're all dead we're all dead <laughs> so yeah i i thought it'd be more about science and about space but it was all about teenage drama basically um yeah anyway <laughs> uh the water dancer i'm putting in chaotic good because why would you give powers to harriet tubman I feel that, that that has a chaotic good vibe, you know? Oh, and drink again. Um, I did this as a buddy read with Nikki from uh, Red Dot Reads. And I think we had similar opinions where we thought it was good, but also there was something missing. You could tell this is a debut novel. And the premise was interesting. To me, I found it really bizarre when I realized with Harriet Tubman, because I thought that giving her powers almost like and I know that that was not the point but almost it almost like lowers the impact of what she actually did because she didn't have powers you know she did that without like the added power of having like a magical um well power to to that and so that's not my only gripe with it, but uh, generally, I enjoyed it. So that's why it's in the chaos shade good. Yeah. Uh, then we have the stories Grandma Forgot and How I Found Them by Nadine Aisha Yessa. Then then recommend. If you like middle grade, 100% get it. It's so, so good. I, I read like the first sort of 50 pages. It's written in uh, verse, so it's mostly like almost like a poem and there's illustrations as well and it's a really cute book and I read yeah I read the first 50 pages one day and I was like okay if I read 50 pages a day blah 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 the next day I finished it I literally read 200 pages or something which is easy to read when obviously it's it's not like a full page of of writing but I literally couldn't put it down I think I read until like 1 a.m but loved it uh then we have the Chinese letters uh, which is a book that I read in French. So this is actually, I believe the author wrote in French. They are from China, but they immigrate to Canada. So it was written in French. And this is a series of letters between uh, a woman who's living in China, her boyfriend or fiance who moved to Canada, and their sort of best friend who also left China to move to Canada. And you kind of see through the letters the weird relationships between them and how they are uh, breaking down because of distance, because of cultural differences. Like uh, she wants to stay, he's like, come to Canada. And and there's a lot of pressure and all of that. So I thought it was really beautiful. Um, yeah, I guess I have to put it in Tenten because there was no chaos. I didn't think it was chaotic. Uh, oh, drink. I'm almost done. Oh, thank God there's only three books left. Um, so yeah, just, just a good, simple book, I thought. Then we have... Oh no, we're running out of space. <laughs> we have... Uh, this is a French book, French nonfiction. I shouldn't have really put it here, but it's um, about how... The title is... Toutes les femmes sont d'abord ménagères. So it means every woman is first and foremost a housewife or something of the sort. And it's looking at the feminist movement in Quebec, uh, the province between the 60s and 80s when a lot of the uh, movement was starting and the legislation, you know, for 
um, stay-at-home mothers to be recognized for child care, for just women's rights generally. And yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know that I would tend to recommend. You know what? I'm leaving it out because I, it, it doesn't really belong on any of these categories. <laughs> Uh, is this the only non-fiction I've read? Well, I guess technically Cocoon might have been non-fiction, but oh my goodness. Oh, that is a poor summer of non-fiction reading. Anyway, uh, we have the bookish people. Oh, this was chaotic bad. Oops, this is too big. Okay, chaotic bad. So this is following... I think it's like about a week in the life of a bookshop in the US and I don't know, it didn't make sense to me. There was just there was just things happening and a bunch of characters having their perspective, but I was like, why? I don't know, I did not like it. This was an arc I've had for years. Uh, so I'm glad I, I listened to audiobooks, so it kind of went quickly and I got it done. And finally we have Yellow Face. Ooh, let's go with Booktube made me do it. <laughs> I I feel like I had to jump on the hype of reading it although it sounded really interesting when it came out uh, but then I don't think I have all, literally a full document of notes on this book and I want to do a review are you interested in hearing me do a review of this book because I think I'm a bit late to the party now all the reviews have come out ages ago but I yeah I have a lot of thoughts because I don't think that it did what it it's trying to sell itself that it's doing like it's all like ooh a publishing tell all you know of racism in the industry and it's like not really what it is it's mostly a rant about twitter which feels like even more outdated like literally in the last few months now that twitter is literally dead <sighs> and yet i enjoy the writing and i enjoy some of the thoughts into it although some of them didn't seem to go the whole way so yeah it was it was okay well this this was it this was my tier ranking of my summer reads uh while having a little glass of wine it's past 5 p.m now so we're okay but yeah overall clearly i read a lot of good books this summer which i'm really pleased about like the majority is intent and recommend yeah, I'm very happy with that. There were some good reads and I I was generally quite pleased with how it went and I've been I've been repeating it so much on my videos, you know, trying to be kind to myself, but also just try I'm learning to DNF. Oh yeah, DNF Ludmark by Tracy Dion. DNF that realize it's just not for me, that's why it's not on this list actually. I've tried I read like a quarter of the way and then I was like no, it's like so much in the lore of the, the Arcturian stuff and that is not what I was keen about in the first book. In the first book, there was a lot about her finding herself through like finding out what happened to her mother and her ancestors and this power and energy of roots or that she had through her ancestors. Uh, but this is all like, oh, I'm the sire of Arthur, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't care about any of that. And I decided to give up. And I've already DNF two books in September, and we're like the 10th of September. So I feel, I feel good. I feel like I'm learning. I'm learning to read what I want to read, which is important. And I think hopefully that's why I have so many good books here. Let me know what you read this summer. What was your top book of the summer? Let me know. I would love a good recommendation. And let me know if you agree or disagree with my ranking. I would love to hear what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching and hey, see you back. Bye.